thank you guys for coming tonight. Uh, tonight we're going to do a basic uh, re vehicle recovery and I'm going to cover uh, a few things of just sort of best practices initially, what you, know, when you, what you do when you get stuck. And I'm going to talk about how to recover your vehicle without a winch and di different ways and techniques and tools that you can use. And then uh, talk about recovering a vehicle with a winch. And then that's where all this fun stuff behind me comes into play. Um, so tonight's, um, you know, there'll, there'll be some stuff, even if you've got some recovery experience, uh, there's always something that you'll get out of uh, a class like this. You know, if it's just a reminder of a, you know, a good habit or best practices or that kind of thing. So, um, and then we'll stick around for some questions and I, I'll have some more sort of next steps information for you afterwards if you guys want to dive into recovery some more. So um, my name's Chris and um, we'll get going. So <clears throat> you're driving along. Um, we'll pick a spot here. You know, that, that spot, somebody got stuck. So you're driving along in the woods, you get stuck. Um, and let's talk about getting stuck. You have a, another vehicle with you. Um, so what do you do? First thing, the best advice that was ever given to me in, in recovery training that I received back in the day was just, okay, you're stuck. So don't just jump out of the car and start grabbing stuff and just like going nuts. Just slow it down. You know, if you've got a, if you've got a water bottle right there or some coffee or whatever, just hydrate real quick. Take a little bite of a, you know, granola bar or something. Just give yourself some instant, you know, good energy and just let your adrenaline just settle for a second and then just be like, cool, I'm stuck. So now we get to have some fun. We get to pull out some tools. We get to do a little problem solving and figure out how the heck to get out of this pickle. Um, but slow it down, take a, breath, a breather. You know, if you have to make yourself a sandwich or you know, warm up a cup of coffee, whatever you gotta do. But just, that was the best advice because I, again, I see so many times where we're with a group of people and someone gets stuck and I just start seeing people just bail out of the vehicle and they're grabbing bags of stuff. And I, I just, I, I ask them, well, what's the plan? What are you doing? Well, I, you know, I just, blah, blah, blah. and it's just like this tornado of just nonsense. And it's just, people get so spun up when you get stuck and it's like, nobody's chasing you. Your vehicle's not going anywhere because you're stuck. So what's the rush, right? I mean, you're not going anywhere. Um, and the reason why is uh, we want to give ourselves a moment to let that adrenaline settle and to make uh, clear and logical and well thought out decisions. Because we're talking about a very large expensive object on wheels called your vehicle. And we're also talking about people and we don't want people to get hurt. So safe and smart. So um, any stuck situation with a, with a four wheel drive vehicle is gonna have two outcomes or, or a combination of these two. And that's gonna be either a combination of lifting or pulling basic recovery. So thank you guys all for coming. That's, that includes our class, lift and pull, lift and pull. Thank you, have a good night. No, just kidding. Um, <clears throat> but true, though, no, it's literally just those two techniques. When you really boil it down, it's, it's we're gonna either have to lift the vehicle somehow or pull it or a combination thereof. And, and when I say lift, I also kind of lifting slash flotation. We'll dive into that in a little bit. Um, all right, so you've jumped out of your truck You've had a um, uh, couple swigs of some, uh, some coffee. Uh, you're feeling good. Uh, you grabbed a little bite of uh, your favorite uh, peppered beef jerky. And um, we're now kind of looking at it and thinking, okay, this is that, that's this. I'm stuck here, I'm stuck there. I've got something over here. I've got my buddy's truck over there. You start formulating a plan, a plan A, of, of the most efficient, safe recovery that you think you can do with what you, tools you have. And then think of a plan B just in case if plan A doesn't work. <clears throat> and it's good to kind of have that because sometimes we get stuck in scenarios where it's really good to have a backup plan that's already ready and rigged and ready to rock and roll. And I'll use an example of, um, you know, getting stuck in a, like a deep water hole or like a, a mud, you know, mud hole or river crossing or something to where <clears throat> you're, you're trying to cross a river and a vehicle gets, gets bogged down and then now you've got a vehicle that's starting to take on water and that's bad, right? So you want to have a you want to have a plan A and plan B already in place. So plan A would have been, you know, have your winch line already out, already have an anchor point that you waited across the river, rigged and ready to go, and have a buddy over there ready to like run across the river, grab your winch line, hook you up, and then get you across, you know, super quick. That would be, you know, like a plan A, plan B kind of scenario, or have another vehicle that's, that's ready behind you, ready to pull you back out. Otherwise, you know, you're gonna have a drowned vehicle, and that's not a good day. So it's good to have, think of a plan A and a backup plan 
at the minimum if you can. Um, <clears throat> and the last kind of you know, ground uh, building thing is um, the whole point is, of all of this is really just to so you can start practicing or start establishing and practicing good safety habits. Uh, safety is something that um, has to be become routine, right? We all know that when we uh, get to a crosswalk, we don't just bebop out into the street. We look both ways and then we go out, right? That's a good safety habit that was ingrained in, hopefully, ingrained in you <laughs> at a young age. Um, but it's the same kind of thing with vehicle recovery. It's just repetition of establishing good safe habits and just making sure we're doing those good safe things. Um, and, and a good way to do that is back to that first thing I said, which is slow it down, take a second for the adrenaline dump to happen, and then make clear, logical, smart decisions, because um, that'll result in safety. Cool, um, let's talk about getting stuck and you don't have a winch. What the heck do you do? Well, <clears throat> it's back to you know, lifting and pulling, right? So we'll, we'll start with lifting slash flotation, because that's often what happens um, in especially soft you know, ground, uh, you know, like mud, snow, sand, um, your vehicle just gets bogged, right? You just get into some soft stuff, the vehicle's just pfft, stuck. Um, that's a flotation issue. So first tool that hopefully everybody should have, and you, this is literally like the least expensive tool ever, uh, is deflate the tires. Because everybody's got a key, hopefully to your, your vehicle, or a stick, or a, something to poke that little needle valve with, or heaven forbid you actually have a nice tire deflator, but um, deflate those tires a bit. See if that just gives you more flotation so you can actually get out of your, your stuck situation. But don't just sit there and just press the skinny pedal and spin those tires, because all that's happening is you're just bogging yourself down, brrr, getting deeper and deeper and deeper, um, and you're just making yourself having more work in the long run. So always make sure you deflate those tires down if it's a soft, a soft surface, snow, sand, mud, um, next tool uh, that I would uh, go to is the trusty shovel. Um, and I, <clears throat> I like having, um, uh, really for vehicle recoveries, a short-handed shovel because I can get in and do more work with a short-handed shovel a little bit easier. Um, it's also good for digging a hole when you have to go poop. So that's good to do too. Um, but uh, short-handed shovel, you can get in there underneath your bumper and you can really kind of sweep out in front of the tires, right? Um, if you're high-centered, you can get underneath the chassis and kind of give a good nice sweep and clean out those chassis rails or, you know, clean out, you know, your differential if your differential's hung up. But really just get in front of those tires, remove that material that's in the way um, and, and go that route. So shovel's a great actual tool to just have in around or on the vehicle. And um, you know, a little hand trowel is sure is a lot better than nothing. Um, but I wouldn't bring a big old you know, long handled garden shovel. Uh, try to get a short handed shovel. It's just so much easier to work around the truck with a, a short handled shovel. So you'll dig out a bit in, the, in front of the tires. Um, get rid of that, that material that's in front of that tire preventing you to make forward progress. Uh, another thing to consider is um, you know, the jack that you have in your vehicle. Everybody, every vehicle I think still comes with a jack, hopefully, I don't know. Um, but <clears throat> most vehicles will have a, some kind of factory jack. Um, make sure before you go on a trip that if you lifted your vehicle and put bigger tires on it, that your factory jack still reaches your frame or your axle. Otherwise your factory jack's not gonna do a whole lot of good because uh, you'll have to block it up to get it to reach. But one thing you can do is jack the vehicle up. So if you've got a, you know, a, a tire that's just you know, let's say one tire just dropped in a big hole and you're just, you're just stuck, it's not going anywhere. You can get that jack under there. If you can jack up either the frame or preferably the axle, um, you can lift that tire up, throw some rocks or branches or stuff underneath it to kind of build up the road surface so that tire is not so stuck down. Uh, and then you can kind of drive yourself out. Uh, another nice tool um, that uh, is handy to have in a scenario is a high lift jack. Um, good to know how to use it, um, but a high lift jack is, is a great tool. So if your vehicle's stuck in some ruts and you're just super high centered and the ruts go on for another 100 yards and you're just like, this is gonna be horrible of just digging, moving five feet, digging, moving five feet. And ideally you'd wanna straddle those ruts so you can drive them, but you're in them, right? So with a high lift jack, if you've got a, um, you know, a front bumper or something like that, you can use the high lift jack to lift the front of the vehicle up and then just 
push it over, so, you know, so the front tires then go kaplunk out of the ruts and then straddle the ruts. Uh, and then you can go to the back of the vehicle, jack the rear bumper up, and, you know, so it's, you know, out of the ruts and then push it over. It's called casting. It's a great, great little trick that gets you out of ruts and saves you, you know, five hours of digging because you know in those ruts you're going to only get five feet and then you have to dig again another five feet and dig. There are some attachments that you can use with a high lift jack that can make life a little easier if you don't have a, you know, a, an off-road bumper. Um, this is a tool that hooks to the spokes of your wheel and this kind of goes up against the rubber side of the tire and then the high lift jack tongue bites into here and you've got a through bolt to kind of lock it into place and then you can lift up the wheel, right? And then build up the road underneath the tire with some rocks or whatever and then set it back down and out you go. So that's a good tool for the high lift jack, nice little accessory. Um, this one here is just a nice little edge that can kind of hook underneath a, a bumper of a vehicle. Put the high lift jack tongue through here again, bolt it through to keep it locked in and you can lift the, the front or rear of a vehicle up. But again, if you don't have metal bumpers, don't do this on the plastic because it'll just do bad things. Unless you don't like your plastic bumper on your vehicle, and this is a great way to remove it. It'll go, it'll go real quick. But um, the last thing that's a great tool um, for flotation is um, recovery boards. Uh, there's eight billion different flavors of them out there. Um, recovery boards are one of the most handy little tools you'll ever have. Um, because again, with your shovel, you dig out the front of that tire, so that board can get right underneath that tire, and so that tire has a good chance of getting a good bite. Airing the tire down also helps a bit more as well, because that tire can now spread out a little bit and elongate and get, uh, get on the you know, initial cleats there. But a good set of recovery boards is a way to kind of build a road surface that's firm that you can actually then drive onto. Uh, but this, there's some tricks and techniques with these as well. And really the, the biggest one is, is you know, doing a little sweat and just digging out in front of those tires. Yeah, so the key again is just if you can, if you can lift that vehicle up out of the, the miry muck that you got in um, and either cast it off to the side, get it out of the ruts or build up the road a little bit, um, either with some recovery boards or whatever, whatever you have, um, do a little bit of shovel work. You can get out of a lot of those scenarios simply by doing a lifting and increasing the flotation of the, of the truck. Um, and there's some great tools to do that with. I've even, I mean, when, I've, when I was like super young, first had my license, I got stuck in the snow and I used a floor mat, you know, just something to give a tire some flotation. Um, I've used fir boughs, you know, because there was a fir tree on the side of the road. I mean, there's, you know, if, just think, get creative. You, I mean, you're just, you're just building a, a, yeah, you're just building a, a bed for that tire to sit on that just gives it more flotation than what it, what it can do on its own. That's lifting and flotation. Let's talk about the pulling and pushing uh, side of, of recovering without a winch. So, um, same kind of principles, right? You're gonna, you're gonna formulate a good plan A, good plan B, you've had a pause, you've rehydrated yourself, given yourself a good little snack, you're, you're ready to go uh, with your recovery. Um, you're still gonna pull out the trusty shovel because uh, you're probably gonna have to do some digging. Um, even when you're pushing and pulling a truck, sometimes it's just good to get, get that muck or whatever out from in front of those tires. So again, <clears throat> shovel's a great tool, but um, you know, you've, uh, let's say you've got another vehicle with you um, and they've got, you know, um, a recovery point uh, on the vehicle. Um, you, can, you can have that vehicle physically pull you out, right? So that's, that's the pulling aspect. Um, <clears throat> different ways to go about it. I'm a big fan of being safe and not um, getting people hurt. So I like to use... Um, I like to use more kinetic applications if, if I can. And, and what that means is, <clears throat> I'll grab a strap here. And then actually, uh, pardon me a second, let me grab, I'll grab one of these out of the box. All right, so kinetic recovery versus a static recovery. So static means nothing's really moving, right? Think of, uh, think of the, the toe strap you, brought, you bought down at, you know, uh, Ace Hardware or Freddy's or, you know, Wilco Farm Store or whatever, you know, good old tow strap. Those will work. It's called a tow strap. It's designed for towing. 
but it's a static device. Those toe straps do not stretch. And so what you want to do, if you're going <coughs> to pull your buddy out of a hole that's stuck, you want to make sure that that toe strap's nice and, and taut. So you're going to kind of creep forward to make sure you've got tension on it. And then you're going to slowly keep kind of creeping forward and just using good old, <coughs> you know, torque, both vehicles in low range, right? Both people giving it a bit of gas so you can kind of get through. And, and you don't want to shock load or skip the vehicle or jump the vehicle or make it lurch. Yeah, you want to give it a nice, smooth, steady pull. Um, that will totally work. Um, I like making things easier and less, less uh, jarring. Um, so I like using what's called a kinetic strap or kinetic rope. Um, and kinetic means movement. Uh, think of a rubber band. These are just, honestly, <coughs> these are rubber bands that are designed to be stretched by the weights of vehicles. Uh, and how that works is, you still hook it up to your vehicle safely, right? You'll use a, you know, a nice recovery point like in a re rear receiver that's locked down or a re recovery point that's on the vehicle. You'll attach it you know, with a, a you know, soft shackle or a, or a traditional bow shackle, whatever you have, right? <clears throat> You'll lay it out. Both, both ends are connected to both vehicles. Um, the strap doesn't have to be perfectly taut. You could have it slightly slack. And then, uh, you know, the, the lead truck, just, you know, give it, give it some gas. And that'll slowly start building up some kinetic energy in the strap. It'll stretch, 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 stretch. And then eventually that kinetic energy is going to give you an additional boost over what a static strap would do. And it'll help kind of slingshot that other vehicle. You know, it's not that violent, but, you know, a nice you know, extra nudge because you've got kinetic energy that's building up into a strap or into a rope. So um, <clears throat> that's really nice because you're not going to shock load the vehicle. You're not going to shock load the, the, the rigging setup that you have. You're not shock loading the strap. So you don't have to worry about a strap popping. Um, shock loading the vehicle is not ideal because your transmission, your gearbox, your, your axles, your differentials <clears throat> all get grumpy when they get shock loaded and they sometimes go pop, snap, and then you're not really going anywhere, anywhere at all. So kinetic rope, kinetic strap, great tools. Um, <clears throat> we don't have one up here. Do we have one of the drag chains handy? Well, here's the chain here. <clears throat> We've all seen YouTube videos of people yanking other vehicles out with a piece of chain. Um, if you work in the uh, heavy equipment industry, oftentimes a pe big piece of chain is what you're dragging out, a dozer or a cat or something that's stuck. You're just gonna drag that thing out because that's what you do. With our vehicles that aren't built like tanks, like heavy equipment uh, and uh, <clears throat> are much lighter, um, I don't like using chain for vehicle to vehicle recovery because uh, if there's various grades of chain, not all chain is equal. And if that chain is not rated properly for what you're doing and the weight of the vehicle and the forces you're putting on it, that'll go uh, snap, boom, bang. And that's a, now a heavy missile that goes flying through the air and will go through one, either the front windshield or rear windshield <coughs> of whatever vehicle and keep flying until it takes whosoever head happens to be there and then exit the other opposite end of the vehicle. Um, there's tons of videos of it happening. I've had friends that have seen it happen. Uh, I've watched videos that have, of it happening and uh, it makes a big mess and usually somebody's not going home. So um, the reason why guys in heavy equipment use it is because if that goes pop, boom, bang, you're sitting you know, 10 feet up in the air, down low your, is where your recovery point and that's just gonna fly and hit you know, a three inch thick piece of steel on a big cat or dozer or something, so it doesn't really matter. But they also have chain that's, again, rated for their rigs. Uh, and they use very safe techniques and often those guys have some training. So um, <clears throat> I do carry chain with me. Chain is fantastic for, for living in the Pacific Northwest because you know what happens is we have trees and trees fall across the trail. And that's a great tool to wrap around a tree and drag out of the trail uh, versus a strap or a rope. Because when you drag a strap or a rope through the dirt and the mud and the rocks, dragging a tree out, this will start fraying and, and tear and and then it goes crash, boom, bang. But chain, <coughs> chain doesn't really care. So anyway, that's a kinetic recovery, right? Something that stretches, something that gives you just a little bit extra buildup of energy as you're pulling and help <coughs> kind of slingshot you out. So we've talked about <coughs> pulling the vehicle without a winch, right? Using straps, using ropes, talking about naughty things you can do with chain. 
all that kind of stuff. We talked about kinetic and static ropes. A um, little bit, again, tech, technique there, right? You know that kinetic is going to stretch. You know that a static rope will not stretch, so don't make it, don't try to make it stretch because something will break. But uh, both are a tool that you can use as long as you have good recovery points on the vehicle. Um, <clears throat> the other thing you can do is you can use you and your friends, people power. Dig out the front of the tires, get people behind that truck, and just see if you can muscle it out a little bit while the driver's giving it some right foot, you know, and um, see, it's, you'd be surprised how many times just a little extra oomph from some, some folks can get a vehicle unstuck. It's, it's kind of funny, but, <clears throat> you know, you know get, set yourself up for success, you know, dig out the tires a little bit, maybe air the tires down a bit. Um, if you're, you know, high centered or something like that, just deal with that kind of scenario. So you might have to do a combination of a lift and a pull and a push. But um, yeah, don't be afraid to get out and give it a little oomph uh, if you have to. Um, yeah, totally doable. All right, we're going to move on. We're going to talk about winch recoveries. Uh, if you want to recover with a winch, there's some kind of good sort of key initial considerations to think about. And I kind of mentioned them <coughs> off the cuff in the beginning, but to have a winch on a vehicle, uh, you need to have a mount that's engineered and designed to, you know, secure the winch and hold the winch. Um, so that's going to require a bumper of sorts, some kind of winch mount. <clears throat> They're going to have to fit to the front of the vehicle. It's going to require modif modifying the vehicle a bit. And you're adding a fair bit of weight, so you're usually going to have to modify the suspension a bit when you add a winch and a bumper. So there's a big cost consideration uh, when considering a winch. Some vehicles now, thankfully, the factories are finally figuring this out, are, <clears throat> are coming with either an optional factory bumper that can that can provide a winch or they'll even sell a winch from the dealer with the truck from the factory. Um, I know uh, Ram and Jeep uh, are doing it. Toyota actually did it a long time ago. It was a PTO winch back in the day that you could get on a Land Cruiser which is kind of crazy but um, yeah so with a winch comes responsibility. Um, a winch is not super helpful if you don't have all the rigging equipment to use the winch with. So <clears throat> what do I mean? Okay, I'm stuck. Um, there's a tree in front of me. My winch line can get to that tree to pull me forward. Um, I've, see, I see, I've seen a lot of people do this. It works, but there's some, there's some naughty things that happen when you do this. You can run your winch line out to that tree uh, I've seen people wrap that line around the tree and back to itself and hook it to itself. It technically works, but what you're doing is, uh, one, if you're on a, on a heavily used trail, I'll use something out in Brown's camp for an example, those trees are recovery points for lots of folks, not just yourself. And so if you're running your winch line around it, you're kind of, you're going to start wearing a groove into that tree and eventually that tree is going <clears> to, <throat> if too many people do that too often, that tree is going to crash, boom, bang, and that recovery point's now gone. So you're, you don't want to damage the tree. You want that uh, recovery point to remain for other folks. Um, <clears throat> two, um, you're putting a really tight bend in either a steel cable or in a, in a synthetic rope. Uh, that's not ideal. And you're going to have chafing and rubbing points uh, on the rope or the line, which is not ideal and can cause a breakage. <clears throat> and you're also it's just not a safe way to do it, honestly. So <clears throat> it's good to have this, um, this little high-speed uh, orange thing here. That's my uh, drawing of a tree strap. So a tree strap is just a, a short static strap, right? Think it, It's kind of like a toe strap, but it's short. If you're towing with a tree strap, you're like five feet off somebody's bumper, and that's kind of not fun to do. I've had to do it before, but it is not fun. Um, a tree strap is simply just a strap that you can wrap around a tree to create an anchor point. Right, where you would have this go to either a bow shackle or to a soft shackle, <coughs> which then your winch line will connect to. All right, so you can, uh, you, what I'm getting at is you basically, you kind of need some rigging gear. So you can do, and these are really basic scenarios, you can get all kinds of fancy nonsense de depending on what kind of gear you carry. But, um, you know, you can do a lot with a winch if you've got gear to rig the winch with. If you just have the winch by itself, it's okay, but you know, it's like having a, a socket wrench with only a 21 millimeter socket. And that's great for 
things that are 21 millimeters, maybe a 20 millimeter if you're careful and you don't want to round it off, but you know, it's good to have a full socket set, right? Have all the tools to work with that socket wrench. <clears throat> have all the tools to work with your winch. So um, the, uh, let's talk about the differences between steel and synthetic line on a winch. So winches uh, forever and ever and ever always came with steel line because that was the technology at the time. It was uh, relatively inexpensive. It was proven. Um, it's what uh, every tow truck driver still to this day is using for the most part. Um, steel cable uh, is really, really, really strong. It can deal with a lot of nonsense and abuse. A um, <clears throat> couple downsides of steel cable, it's really heavy. Steel cable is really, 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 really heavy. And when you're putting a winch out forward of the front axle of your vehicle, you're putting a lot of weight that's out forward of that front axle. So it has a lot of detrimental effects to the dynamic and handling of the vehicle in the front suspension. So uh, also just in just running the line and working with the line, it's heavy. Um, <clears throat> one thing I don't like about steel cable is if it breaks in the field, uh, you can't really splice that in the field unless you have some very specialized tools that you're always carrying with you. Um, whereas synthetic rope, you can, that can break in the field and you can do a quick resplice in about 90 seconds and you're back up and running. Uh, steel cable tends to store a bit more kinetic energy than, than synthetic rope. Uh, and so if, when steel cable breaks, it makes a very terrifying sound and likes to take heads with it. So, um, uh, or legs or arms or whatever, <clears throat> or half of your vehicle. Um, so just, you know, the thing with steel cable is it's, it's a little bit inexpensive still, but there's kind of no point to get it unless you're <clears throat> a tow truck driver who's using that line 50 times a night, seven days a week, right? <clears throat> uh, most of us aren't using our winches that often. And if you are, then um, good for you. That's actually kind of cool. You should probably be teaching this class. Um, <clears throat> so get synthetic. It's, it's tremendously lightweight. It floats. Uh, it's not going to rip your hands up uh, when you're working with it as much as steel line will because steel is uh, made of little braids. One of those little braids breaks off and it makes a little dangler. That's like a hypodermic needle that's going to stab through your hand, even with a glove. Um, steel cable, if it sets on your drum and you haven't used your winch in like four years, it's going to have a bit of a memory. And living in the Northwest here, even though they're all treated, <clears throat> steel cable will rust. It's steel. At some point, it's going to find a way to rust. That's what Oregon does. We rust things. Uh, not as bad, we don't salt the roads as much. But um, So there's some maintenance things that steel cable likes to have. It likes to be run out and re-spooled more than a synthetic line will. Um, there's just some more work that you have to do with steel cable. Uh, with synthetic rope, <clears throat> um, the maintenance really is just keep it clean. Keep it dressed nicely on the drum and cleaning it is literally just run it out, <clears throat> rinse it through a bucket and let it dry a bit and put it back in. Uh, if it's good quality rope, it should be UV stable. You shouldn't have to worry about issues of the sun destroying it. Um, if it's cheap, crappier rope, the sun will destroy it. Um, but you know, uh, with, UV, with rope, you do need to uh, take a bit more care, uh, not dragging you over rocks and obstacles on the ground. Uh, so get a log, get a jacket, get, you know, use the, the <coughs> dark colored sleeve. Or, you know, there's gonna, most synthetic ropes are going to have some kind of uh, sleeve on them. That's a good friction point that it can slide through and not destroy itself. Um, but again, you can re-splice synthetic rope in the field in like 90 seconds. There's a thousand YouTube videos on how to do it properly and safely. Learn how to do it and try it at home because it's actually pretty stinking easy when you're like really that's all you have to do and I can pull my truck again it's that easy um, the other thing so when you get a winch <clears throat> one thing that's super important with any brand new winch is you want to do what's called pretensioning the line um, this is a bit of a prep work that you have to do with a brand new winch is you know parking lot with a nice slight grade like this find some something to anchor to either another vehicle or tree or something run your line out down to like the last wrap of the drum and then just put the vehicle in neutral with it running and uh, just slowly spool the winch in and tension that line on the drum so you get a nice back and forth tidy wrap that's nice and tight and, and, and good to go. If you don't pre-tension your winch line with a new winch and you go out to recover it, these things are just wrapped on from the factory like super quick. 
uh, and it's all winch brands do that. If they, uh, some winch brands don't even put line on the drum because they really want you to dress the line and, and tension the line. So if you leave it loose uh, and you go pull, you'll actually probably rip the line out of the drum off the cleat that holds it in place. And that's not good. <clears throat> uh, so just tension that line. And there's great videos on how to do that on YouTube as well. And I can talk through it later if you want, but uh, a good extra toolkit that we have <clears throat> Shameless plug um, is our, our large recovery kit. It comes with, you know, with any winch, you know, it's good to have a pulley. So you can do all this fancy stuff. And I'll, I'll go through these riggings here in a setup. But it's good to have a, a pulley. It's good to have a, a tree strap as an anchor point. Um, heck, it's even good to have a winch line extension strap or extension rope, right? So, you know, that's another 70 feet. If my 90 something feet of winch line doesn't get to that tree, I got another, another 70 foot strap that can get me maybe to that tree. Or if I do, need to do a little bit more complex rigging, you know, it's nice to have that extension to get out to where you need to go. So, you know, a good recovery kit's nice to have because you know you've got all the tools together, it's organized, it's tidy, uh, it's there. It's a nice complimentary thing to have if you have a winch. If you don't have a winch, don't get that because most of that stuff in there is completely pointless unless you have that winch, you know. Um, good set of gloves. You know, your hands are your most valuable tool uh, <clears throat> for manipulating everything and you got to drive the dang vehicle out. So don't get your hands all trashed by trying to be a hero and do all your winching and rigging with bare hands. Put some gloves on, you know, uh, protect your hands. Um, I did want to uh, kind of debunk a couple things or educate on these two little guys. Uh, this is called a bow shackle. It's not a D ring because that's not really a D. You know, capital D, we all learn how to write capital Ds. It doesn't look like that. This is called a bow shackle. Uh, D rings are a thing. They do exist, but they are li literally a, a full U or a D, right, when you put it on side. So <clears throat> this is a bow shackle. Uh, it's heavy. It's made out of steel. It's got a working load limit on here. Um, you know, it's an industry standard size uh, of a 7 8 pin. Um, really, really good, strong little way to rig and connect, to connect things together, right, to connect a winch to a strap or whatever like that. Um, <clears throat> there's some downsides, right? So if you have this, let's say you're connecting two straps together or, you know, you're doing a, even rigging up to a tree strap like this, you know, if something breaks, this is a metal object that will go flying through the air. So, um, always good to know what, what your fuse is and how to use it. Uh, this is called a soft shackle. Same kind of principle as a bow shackle, right? It's for, it's a tool to, to rig something together. It's just some heavy duty you know, rope that has a knot in it. And it's basically a slip knot here where it splices into itself and you put it around the knot and then you got a strap here and a strap here. And that's now, that's not going anywhere, right? And this has a, you know, pretty significant working load limit. I love using soft shackles for certain things. I love using bow shackles for certain things. <clears throat> this doesn't care about sharp edges because it's a hunk of steel. This is, uh, not so friendly with sharp edges. So if you're doing, uh, let's say you're gonna drag log out and you're using a drag chain. I don't use soft shackles on a drag chain when I'm dragging a log because the chain, the log, the, all my rigging gear, that's all just gonna get drugged through, run over by itself or whatever. So I use some good old bow shackles. Always good to have a couple of those in the truck. But when I'm rigging up to a, a, tree, a tree saver, you know, anchor point, uh, let's say I'm connecting two straps together, or my winch line to a winch line extension, <clears throat> I'll use a soft shackle. Anything that's going soft to soft, right? Strap to strap, rope, winch line to, to strap, whatever, to anchor point, use a soft shackle. Because uh, then if something breaks and that goes flying through the air, that's not gonna hurt you as bad as this going flying through the air. Just kidding, I, I would do it. <laughs> Here, I wanna toss that back. Uh, right? It's just, it's just, it's just rope, right? And uh, we can pass that around if you guys want <clears throat> you know, to. I'll pass that around so you guys can kind of see that too. So that's kind of the difference between the two. Some people say, oh, I use soft shackles for everything. Well, I, my response to that is you're an idiot because that's going to break against something sharp, right? And when you're dragging the tree out with your drag chain and using a soft shackle, you basically just threw that soft shackle away. So why throw it away? Just Use the right tool, use a bow shackle. Um, or somebody who's like, oh, I swear by bow shackles. I, you're an idiot. 
technology's improved. Use a soft piece of rope between two straps, otherwise the bowjackle becomes a missile. So this is a new, um, <clears throat> you know, we've got Iron Man t-shirts here. This is our newest piece of fashion. It's called the Iron Man bib. Um, most people would think you'd wear it this way. I actually like wearing it this way. Oops, sorry, backwards. I'll wear the Iron Man bib this way, because now I've got a pocket to catch all my, my drippings, my food, and my slobber, and I can have those snacks and save them for later. No, just kidding. This is a, <coughs> this is a, a winch line damper blanket. Um, this is what you'll, you'd set, you know, kind of up here where that connector is uh, to just sort of put an extra bit of weight on that winch line. So if something does go pop and goes flying, this will slow it down and as it flies through the air, this also kind of will spread out and just drag, right? It's just slowing something that's moving very rapidly and violently down. And the bib, the pocket in here, that's a great place to put just some, you know, some weight in there if you need to, just to slow things down. Uh, this, this comes with all of our winches. Most, most companies are gonna supply these as well, but this is a great thing to, you know, even on straps or whatever, I'll pass this around. <coughs> Winch line damper blanket. It's very rudimentary, but again, you know, I, I talk about things that kind of do multiple jobs. It will work great as a bib. All right, so let's, let's talk about some of the basic rigging scenarios. The, uh, the most uh, simple, straightforward, the, uh, whenever you think of winching, most folks will think of, I'm just gonna run out to something and pull myself. So the, the most common method is a, what's called a single line pull. Right, I'm, I'm going this direction, I have stopped, my vehicle is stuck, I've got this handy tree out in front of me, could also be my buddy's truck, could be a big old boulder that's the size of a Volkswagen, whatever, I've got, uh, I've got an anchor point that weighs more than my vehicle that I can rig to with a tree strap. <clears throat> I'll wrap that tree strap around that tree trunk, All right, I'll bring the two ends together down here, run the winch line out, and I'll connect it um, with A, Yes, we're learning. Love it, right? With a soft shackle, why not? It's a strap going to a piece of rope, right? Use a soft shackle. If you don't have a soft shackle, use a bow shackle, but why not? Good opportunity to use a soft shackle. And then I'll, I'll just pull my Mary self forward, right? Good to go. So that's a single line pull. Pretty straightforward. <clears throat> Let's say I did the single line pull, and all I heard was a bunch of Brrrr, and nothing happened, My, and I literally just didn't make any forward progress. Well, you're probably pretty dang stuck, so good on you, good job. Um, if you did some digging, right, dig out in front of the tires, give yourself the, you know, the most opportunity you can, <clears throat> or if you just, you know, want to get down to some of those lower wraps on the drum of your winch so you have a bit more pulling power, you could do what's called a double line pull, but this requires a couple extra pieces of kit. So. Double line pull, you're still going running your winch line out to that tree, you're still putting a tree strap on that tree, you're still putting um, <clears throat> uh, you know, that whole rigging there, but you're introducing now a pulley, right? Pulley block. This is uh, literally a pulley. You wrap the rope through it, close it back up, right? This is now rigged off of the, um, you guys are liking the bib, aren't you? Yeah, Luke, Luke loves it. It's a good bib, isn't it? Yeah, when you're eating the popcorn, you don't even use the popcorn bag, just use the bib. And you've got just maximum popcorn storage. It's, it's fantastic, right? <clears throat> so a double line pull is, is pretty trick because you're now using a pulley in there, right? That's what that blue thing is. You guys can tell that's a pulley. It's pretty accurate drawing, wouldn't you say? Um, and then you're running your winch line back to maybe a secondary anchor point back to the vehicle, right? Usually with a strap or straight to the anchor point. Uh, here, since I've got a metal object, you know, that's, if all I had was a soft shackle, I'd do it, but honestly, that's a little bit of a naughty edge. I'd probably put a bow shackle in there instead. And uh, what you're essentially doing is physics. And physics is pretty exciting when it comes to vehicle recovery. You are effectively doubling the pulling power of the winch or having the load of the vehicle or the load on the system by half, right? You're cutting it in half by going out to a pulley and back to itself. If you're going out to a pulley and back to another anchor point down here or to your buddy, you ain't doing that. It's, it, you're only getting the mechanical advantage and upping your, your nerdery score by a bit of going out and back to yourself. And that just gives your winch a bit more oomph. 
you're again, you're having the weight on the system. So you took a 6,000 pound vehicle and you made it feel like 3,000 pounds because of the mechanical advantage that you've earned, um, which then gives your winch a more of a fighting chance. Great little rigging scenario to know if you're really, 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 really stuck. I mean, just a good way to do it. <clears throat> but it requires having a pulley. All right. Let's say you're bebopping down the trail. One of my favorite places to go just for a fun day trip with the family is, you know, out on uh, what's called um, uh, Gunsight Butte or Gunsight Ridge, which is above Badger Lake, which is across Highway 35 from Mount Hood Meadows. Really fun, pretty place to go explore and check out the views. Um, but you're cruising along. You see a little bunny rabbit in the trail. You're like, oh, he's cute and precious. There's a squirrel over here hanging out. Not sure why, but he, he's kind of cool. Um, but there happens to be a tree across the trail. Well, that kind of stinks. Um, don't have a chainsaw with me, no worries, but I have my winch and I got drag chain. So what we're gonna do is note the slightly canted angle of this beautiful blue vehicle here compared to this guy. I uh, just so happen to have a lovely tree that's just off the side of the road here. I don't wanna pull the tree towards me because that doesn't clear it out of the road, right? <clears throat> I've got a recovery tree here, right? But that's kind of a long drag down, but I've got this lovely recovery point that's just directly parallel to where that tree is. I'm gonna run my winch line out. I've got a tree strap around this guy. I'm putting a pulley right there to do what's called a redirect. I'm redirecting my line to another anchor point. And then over here, I'm gonna use that trusty drag chain, wrap it around that tree trunk, use a bow shackle, right? Because we don't want to uh, throw a good soft shackle away <clears throat> and I'm going to pull that dang tree straight over to here right off that road and clear the trail for somebody. I'm not going to pull it halfway through the road and squeak my truck by like a jerk. <laughs> I'm going to pull it all the way off the road so it's out of the way for everybody. I can't tell you how many times I've come up to a tree that's in the road and somebody just like, that's about as wide as my truck is, that's all I'm going to do. Perfect. It's like, come on, really? Or, you know, you'll see a cut where they like cut it for like a side-by-side side and you're like, dude, you just had to cut like literally another foot and everybody could have gone through. Don't be that person. But anyway, <clears throat> um, so that's what's called a redirect, but still a static pull, right? We're still doing a single line. We're just redirecting the line to another point of interest, right? To, to move the object that we want to move in the direction that we want to move it. I don't want to move it towards me. I don't want to drag it all the way down the road down to this tree. I just want to get it off the trail so we can continue on to uh, more excitement and uh, fun. So that requires, again, a couple of rigging points, you know, drag chain, tree saver, pulley, right? Basic, uh, basic kit. This eagle's, he's coming down here. He's probably going to, he may go after the squirrel, but that rabbit looks kind of hapless as well. So who knows? Um, <clears throat> another thing I want to bring up too is, um, You've got this kind of reading scenario here. Um, and let's use this guy because he's kind of fun. So you got your friend that's just kind of chilling here. And he's like, you know, this is an aspen. Isn't that neat? I'm looking at that aspen and I love that tree and it's really cool. And I'm, I'm not really paying attention to what's going on here. And I'm just chilling right here. That's kind of a not good place to hang out. And let me tell you why. <clears throat> let's say we put our tree strap here and we put a soft shackle around something kind of sharp like this, or, you know, whatever, something here goes crash, boom, bang. This line now all of a sudden goes really taut and takes his head off, <laughs> which is slightly morbid and I'm sorry, but uh, it could happen. Uh, you know, we don't, this is like kind of the danger triangle, the Bermuda triangle of a recovery scenario where, you know, that person's in a bad spot. You just don't want to be there. If that's your friend, just don't do the recovery and say, friend, could you please move? I don't want to hurt you today. Um, so that's just a, not a good place. A great place to be is just kind of away from the whole rig. You know, this isn't, this isn't uh, too good of a place either because hey, he's out of the triangle. He's not going to get hurt. Well, what if this goes crash, boom, bang, and that could go whoosh, and smack him in the face. And that would be bad. We don't want that either. So it's just good to get all people just kind of away from the death zone of maiming and, and misery. We don't want to be hurt. So this is, again, safety. On this, on this setup, the winch damper blanket or slash bib, you know, popcorn bib. Thank you, Luke. I would probably put that right here for starters, because if that 
breaks, that keeps it from flying there. If it breaks there and flies through this pulley, you're probably okay. Another thing you could do is you could put it right here, just below the pulley, so that keeps things from flying to your truck, right? Just something to slow this system down if something breaks. You know, here might be a good spot if you only had one thing to put on it. Another thing you can do is you could take like a kinetic strap, because we're not using it in this scenario, and I can just kind of zigzag it across the winch line if I had to. Floor mat works good as a damper blanket as well. Just something to slow that scenario down. But the squirrel's good. The rabbit's probably going to get run over if he doesn't move or eaten by the eagle. But your buddy's safe as well. So <clears throat> the other thing, again, I was talking about the angle here uh, of the vehicle. Um, that vehicle will we'll, we'll aim it straight towards the tree that we're pulling the line in from. And I have these little handy red arrows to kind of make sense of the direction that the line's going to be moving when we're pressing the winch. So it's always good to set yourself up instead of being, you know, straight on with the road because I don't know how to use my steering wheel and position my vehicle properly, that you're putting a lot of side load on your winch. Why not just set yourself up for success and just aim your truck at that? Because you can, you have this thing called a steering wheel. And that way that goes straight into the winch and starts laying nice and tidy back and forth, back and forth as you're doing your pull. And everybody's happy, including your friend. So again, that's a redirect using a pulley. So this is a by yourself scenario. Notice, um, you know, the friend isn't here. He's, I ran out of tape, so he's just kind of, he's way back here. He's hanging out. I'll put him down there. <clears throat> here you're with a buddy, right? Uh, you're with, uh, with your friends. We're cruising along, coming down the trail this direction. This deer just darted across the road. This person almost had an accident in their seat and drove down the hill to avoid hitting the deer, but now they're way down the hill or off the road and stuck. Right? Okay, it happens. Deer's survived. It's going to hang out. Uh, where's that deer sitting, though? In the danger zone. Right. All right. <clears throat> so that's good to know. So the deer, not so smart, but that's all right. Deer's alive. Let's bring our buddy out. This is our buddy here. He was driving that one. Okay. This is another great example of what you can do with a redirect is I'm, I want to get my buddy back up to the road. You know, he may have a winch, and that's all well and good. But um, there's no anchor points down here to, to redirect the line back up, right? So I've got a winch on this truck, right? So what we're going to do is pulley here, right? I've got my tree strap on that handy tree. I've aimed my vehicle thusly. So I'm setting my, my winch up for maximum success, pointed straight at the pulley, because that's my pivot point. And that line's going straight down here to my, my friend's truck. And I've got a, you know, Either, you know, they got one of these in the rear receivers that we're using as the pull point. Uh, I, I drew a tree strap here because you can always go from like tow hook to tow hook back to the strap together. So you're pulling both sides of the frame. Just a good way to do it. And then now I'm pulling my friend's vehicle straight back up to that road. Everything's nice and safe. We got a winch line damper blanket here. I'd like to put one here as well. Um, just be careful because this one eventually gets sucked down to here and you may have to slide it back up. But again, if if this guy is like, hey, I want to get out and take pictures. Look at that neat deer. It's like, dude, you're in the danger zone. We talked about this. Don't be there. Go, go over there. Get out of the way. Think about safety. Think about the people that you're traveling with. Um, just get people out of that danger triangle. Use good communication, hand signals if you have to. Get on the radio, whatever. But get out of that scenario. Just a great way to recover another vehicle. Um, <clears throat> or whatever, using that good old redirect and a static pole. Uh, another good one <coughs> down here. This is a uh, doing a rede redirect static pole again. I'm going to put down that because I don't need to carry that anymore. So <coughs> we're cruising along. The lead vehicle here gets stuck. There's just a big mud hole or some ruts that they just sunk into. It happens. No worries. Um, but they don't have a winch. But the vehicle behind does. I always love having the tail gunner of, of a convoy of vehicles being the vehicle that has the winch, if that's the only vehicle that does have the winch. Because you can do this kind of thing, where I'm going to position this vehicle to aim it at this lovely tree recovery point here, or anchor point, run the winch line out to that, tree strap, pulley, back to my friend's vehicle. We want to keep going this direction, right? So <clears throat> I'm now pulling my friend's vehicle this way. And, and you may have to reconfig this a bit if this isn't enough distance to get them out of a hole. 
but gosh, what a great way to use a winch to get, uh, get somebody unstuck. Um, there's a lot more advanced rigging that you can do, um, <clears throat> but um, that's something that we'll save for another day. Uh, but these are kind of the mo more common scenarios that you'll come across that you want to sort of have in your bag of tricks that you're like, you know what, <clears throat> I can do that. I've got the tools. I've had some training. I know how that scenario works. I know how to set that rigging up and, and make that happen and make it safe, right? Because we don't want someone to get hurt. There's all kinds of just really cool stuff you can do if, if people have the tools and the training and, you know, some of these scenarios that they've done practiced, you know, this is all stuff that you can set up in your driveway or in a flat parking lot with vehicles or whatever, or even just do it on the ground and just kind of lay things out just so you can kind of map out different scenarios and, and practice it. Um, that's really where you're going to get those skills um, is from getting some training and, and practicing it. So that's a great segue to my, my last sort of point. And that is uh, if you're going to do a winch on your vehicle, um, don't just get buy a winch and just buy all the stuff and get out there. Take a winch vehicle recovery class. There are two uh, really, really good uh, credentialed certified organizations that are, um, that are international but also have chapters here in the Pacific Northwest. One of them is the I-4WD-TA, that's the International four-wheel drive trainers association you can get on their website and you can say i live here who in this area has is a trainer they'll it'll have a map of these are the trainers in the area their contact info you reach out to them hey when's your next class i'm a beginner i'd love to get a beginner winching recovery class maybe you've got a group of people that you want to do it together make it fun make a weekend of it <clears throat> that's a great way to get some good training and those classes what they'll do is most of those instructors, the first day, they'll kind of run you through some, some rigging scenarios. And then the second day, usually they're multiple day classes, if it's a good one. Um, the second day, they'll actually take you out and, and have you use the tools that you brought to, and get you stuck and have you recover your vehicle using those, these methods. But it'll be supervised and it'll be orchestrated and it'll be safe and you'll learn. And you'll actually work the gear that you have, which is such, such good training. So that's one, one good group. Also 7P, another great uh, <coughs> credentialed uh, four-wheel drive recovery instructor group. Um, those are the two I would highly recommend. Those are the two that um, I've been trained by. I've, I've gone through their courses many times over the last couple decades. And um, they give you great hands-on training. Get with a certified instructor. Do it with a group of friends. It's worth the money. It's going to be a few hundred dollars but it is worth the money because you will learn, you'll, this is like day, like this is the first hour, you'll do this, and then you'll start learning a lot of really, really cool advanced techniques uh, of using not just winching gear, but all the gear that I've talked about, including a high lift jack and all kinds of things, where you're like, I had no idea that that could do that and get you out of that. It'll blow your mind, and you'll, you'll be getting your hands dirty and doing the gear, uh, doing the exercises, working it yourself. So. Um, just that, that experience of just using your gear in one of those tra training scenarios is the foundation. And then just, again, when you get out on a trip and you get stuck, and what do you do? Take a breath, slow it down for a second, come up with your safe plan, uh, and just enjoy the fact that you just got stuck in some beautiful place where there's nobody around and, uh, and you get to do a little bit of problem solving. It's kind of fun. It's something different than sitting at a desk all day during the week. You know, it it's, it's makes you feel alive, you know. Get a little sweat, burn a few calories that can justify the big old tasty dinner that you're about to make later on when you get to camp. Um, but uh, yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely do some training uh, if you're going to run a winch. So thank you so much for being out here. You. Appreciate you all. I know we went kind of long, but this is like a fire hose of knowledge. So it was great. We really yeah. No. My pleasure.